All right. So you guys kind of know what the stomach is already, right? It's a pouch that holds food that comes from the esophagus down to your stomach. So what happens in the esophagus? What kind of digestion takes place in the esophagus? None. But real digestion, other than the primary breakdown of um, polysaccharides, that's something that happens in the mouth. So your stomach, I would remember that it has mechanical and chemical digestion. Both occur in the stomach. So I can see a question on your test, man. The stomach has which type of digestion? Mechanical, chemical, mechanical, and mechanical, or none of the above. That's not the question I was about. But you have two sphincters in your stomach, the top, at the, where the stomach, where the esophagus and stomach come together. That is the uh, cardiac sphincter. And where the stomach may, becomes the small intestine, that is the caloric sphincter. Um, anyone who happens to have ever had reflux, that is because your cardiac sphincter did not close off all the way. Then when the pyloric sphincter doesn't close off, it, it has something called dumping syndrome. So sometimes people who have had some kind of gastric uh, surgery, gallbladder removal, or just because they don't digest things well, Within about 30 minutes after they eat, their stomach, the color sphincter doesn't close like it's supposed to, and it will just dump it on into the small intestine. There are four regions of the stomach. So near the cardiac sphincter, that is called the cardiac portion of the stomach. It's that very top portion of the stomach. You have a fundus. Um, so you have two different fundus in the body. One of the funduses would be in the stomach. It's kind of the rounded curvature of the stomach. Also, in the other fund that you have in your uterus. Some, some, some of you don't have a blood. Some of you have fun. Fun that, yes. The body of the stomach is the long portion um, where it kind of looks like that T shape. And then the pyloric area is where, or the pylorus is where the pyloric uh, sphincter in the stomach is. Um, inside your stomach, you have stuff called rugae. Rugae is the stuff in the stomach that stretches when you overeat. How many of you guys have? So much about what's good for you at some point. It's something you really like. So, did you know that literally with that rugae in your stomach, it can stretch? Your stomach can stretch to the size of the ball? What? Your stomach can stretch and, and retract when it can stretch to the size of the ball. It can hold two meters. Okay. And it is completely stretched out. Oh, my goodness. How is your stomach? So, that's your question. Your stomach inside your chest. I said, that's your heart. And you're not aware of what's good for you. On your stomach. Everybody's stomach is a different size. So people who abuse their stomach, who overeat all the time, like I think my son-in-law's stomach at resting is probably the size of my shoe. Because he eats a ton of food. Um, mine looks like a banana. And I know because I had it carved off that piece. It's probably a little bigger than that now because I, um, I drink too much milk. But, um, yeah, everybody's stomach is a different size. So it depends on how much you eat, how often you eat. So people that eat like uh, one small meal a day, their stomach's going to be very small. People who eat three meals a day is going to have an average size stomach. But people who have who eat a ton of food, it's going to be a little larger. Um, during that time, video you. It's really a good video to watch. Um, so the rugae is very important because it is that large expansion surface that it also secretes, secretes uh, and helps with cell absorption. So that is what rugae actually looks like. So on the left is a diagram where you can see the cardiac portion, the fundus, that rounded portion, the body, and the pyloric area. And you can also see the rugae. The left or the right side is what your stomach really looks like if it's dissected. Like the stomach was my least favorite part of cadaver lab. Oh no, we don't dissect stomach. Oh, pardon me. Oh, okay. Um, so these are you guys will recognize some of these from your quiz. Cheese so. Cheese cells. I'm gonna tell you what's important about each one of these, and you would probably want to know for your head. Cheese cells, they secrete pepsinogen, which when combined with hydrochloric acid from the parietal cells, make pepsin. 
Pepsin is what breaks down protein. I can see myself asking, which of the following, which of the following cells are necessary to break down uh, protein? So you have to have parietal cells functioning and cheek cells functioning so that you can break down protein. Another thing about your parietal cells, they make something called intrinsic factor. Intrinsic factor is how we absorb B12. Everybody needs B12. You can be anemic if you don't have deep enough B12. Um, people who are alcoholics, uh, they, because of the damage they do to their stomach by drinking a large volume of alcohol, they destroy the parietal cells' ability to make intrinsic factor. Therefore, when they come into the hospital or um, for a lot of people in everyday life, when they, especially when they stop drinking alcohol, they have to take B12 in bed. They can or, or sublingual B12 because their stomach cannot absorb it and it cannot be processed. Is there Um, could be multiple things. So sometimes, okay, anemia is when you don't have enough red blood cells floating around to carry oxygen the way you need it. And so anemia can be food related, so it could be if you're not getting enough iron, which comes from green vegetables and red meats. If you're not getting enough B12, um, which comes from also green vegetables or medication. Um, or if you have like a kidney disorder, or people who, are, who have heart disease and hypertension, especially from a young age, um, tend to be more anemic because of the stress that you come with. Yeah, you get below about if your your uh, hemoglobin gets below about seven, you start to have symptoms of a heart attack because you're not feeling the oxygen. Hormone blood craves oxygen. And you have, and lots of times after you have stomach surgery, you don't absorb nutrition the way you're supposed to, so you're supposed to take vitamins every day. Um, you're supposed to take chewable iron, you just can't take up regular iron pills. Um, you still have to take it for anemia, take up a, a coated, uh, hard coated pill, and people who have had gastric sleeve or gastric bypass or some kind of stomach surgery due to cancer, they can't break down. Um, I know someone who's about to have a knee back then, and how, like, just for the tummy tuck Uh, for the surgery or for healing? Just to the little side of their tummy. They don't have much skin they have to really drink. Well, the so there's a, like, if it's someone who has a large amount of skin, and then they're going to, because what they do is they cut, they literally take something that looks like giant meat shears, and they go from the middle and they pull the fat and they cut it around the center so like they clean it up and cut it. Then they take, uh, with that incision, they also take all of the abdominal, or all your stomach muscles, like so that uh, all of the abdominal muscles, they actually sew those back into the, uh, where they belong in the abdomen, and then they close everything up. So it really depends on the amount of skin that's being removed and how much work they have to do. So it can be anywhere from one to three hours. Well, she's also getting like most people do. Medicine. Most women do that in an implant You get it. You get. You need a toothpick. Well, um, so probably anywhere from two to four hours. Why does it like affect people so much whenever they do that? Because they're just taking the fat out. Why would they make you do get a new belly button. Mm -hmm. It's just from here to here. Yeah, it, and like I saw like a C-section, but I saw my watch one time. They a little incision about the sex and they turn it green and stuff. And they also it down the corner where it really wants to take it. The other thing is, it takes about three to six months to heal from that surgery. Oh, you God. have to wear it. Your thing <laughs> yeah. Also, when they when they remove fat, they're removing lymph tissue and things like that. So you wear an abdominal binder for like three months. And then even after that, there will still be swelling at the lower part of the abdomen for several months, um, just because of how the body has to learn to process all of that fluid, that it, interstitial fluid. Like whenever they do the surgery, where they want to be like that small, like they'll be like really small, like 
Yeah. Okay, so here's the thing, people. So here's the misconception about um, coming up and things like that. Yes, it will remove skin and some fat. It doesn't really make you lose a lot of weight unless you're someone who has like you lost massive weight. amount of skin. Um, someone who's lost a lot, of, like someone who lost 250 pounds, like really fast. And if you have loose skin, you would want to go to the Yeah, um, like the amount, it just depends on the amount of skin. Uh, um, I had, I worked with a lady who had a tummy tuck done just because she wanted it done. I don't know about this, but it's like, 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 plastic surgery? Oh, gastric sleeve? Oh, yeah. Gastric bypass or the balloon? Yeah, I don't know. I didn't know. So, some people do it first just because they want to be healthier. Some like a balloon and like cough or something. I don't know. No, it's like it goes in and the balloon goes in and it actually makes fun of some It's just different kinds of procedures. Um, you can do, they can do like, my stomach is shaped like this. They even do it when the stomach is shaped the opposite direction because it's vertical to the calves. Some people do have a revision. So, what I have is instead of having the stomach to go look like a banana, they actually invert the stomach the wrong way. So, it's harder for food to pass by. They deter it eating as much because it's going to be too much of that. It will automatically back up. Um, Um, then there's bypass where they bypass the stomach all together and make a, a separate little pouch that goes directly into your stomach. Um, there are lots of things that, um, there are lots of good and bad on both. Like uh, Chris had it done and after I did, and his blood sugar is so much better now. So hopefully I'll have a 70 year old husband that has lots to see that. You know, the rate he was going if he had got an infection. Foot because his blood sugar was all over the place. And you guys know that he's always looking, he's giving, giving himself some insulin or he's paying. Um, and yeah, then he doesn't do that so much. But it would, uh, if you want to get a, a, a something happens to one of his feet or some kind of mud or something because his blood sugar is just going to stay with him. So, like a 30 guy, he's got some good legs. I know, I always told him that I wish I could uh, just raise legs a little. I can't remember what it's worth or what it was. I don't know, but I was like, I'm like, his legs are like so shiny. I thought we were looking at them when they were going to be like, I don't know. Filter to be filtered. 
So that's why. Um, funny, they had to go through that talk about gastric bypass. They were trying to talk about alcohol. Um, and then lots of medications that we take. Um, so like aspirin, you know, a lot of people that have to take an aspirin every day, they take what's called an enteric coated aspirin. That means it won't break down. Advil, if you buy a pill Advil, how it has that hard shell on the outside of real ad regular Advil, also so it won't break down the stomach because it will cause problems. Um what the does it let gel inside? No, they will actually break down in the stomach. But like if you look, the original Advil pill was a little orange, orange looking pill. It's an Advil and blue. And it had Advil and blue and hot and it was hard on the outside. That is an enteric coated pill and that's they did not want to absorb the stomach because it's very hard on the stomach. Um, the other thing I want you to remember is that when, when the stomach finishes breaking down food, so that it's kind of in a thick, um, pasty, heavy cream kind of consistency, that's called chyma. And it's in that consistency so that it can be absorbed in the small intestine. So it's kind of break, broken um, those major nutrients down into things that can be absorbed. So regulation of gastric secretion. That happens um, by the nervous system and by hormones. So regulation of gastric secretions happens by via the, paras the parasympathetic uh, nervous part of the nervous system and then hormones that are released from the gap from the G cells. Um, it happens to be a positive feedback. Um, now foods that empty from the as, as foods empty from the stomach then sympathetic nervous system then shuts off that gastrin. So you guys are going to go eat lunch here in just a little bit. And so all of those enzymes are going to be activated and hormones are going to be activated in your stomach about 30 minutes and then about 20 to 30 minutes after you eat. Now, one to two hours after that, or depending on how much protein you eat, maybe three to four hours after that, um, then that gastrin will be shut off. The sympathetic nervous system says, okay, there's nothing in the stomach. And it shuts that gastrin off so that it does not, it's not released, and there's not continual um, hydrochloric acid release and all that in the stomach that would cause problems. Um, everything kind of overlaps, though, but it, it does stop. And then there's a small amount of gastrin in the small intestines that's released just to finish that final portion of breakdown and absorption. Um, you have three phases, the cephalic phase, the gastric phase, and the intestinal phase. So what would the cephalic phase be? What is cephalic phase? Is that the first one? Cephalic would be more of a phase. Gastric phase is known in the stomach, and the, the, the cephalic phase uh, is when we detect food in the parasympathetic nervous system. And the vagal nerve, and it makes that gastrin um, secrete. So I want you to know that that's what the cephalic does. That, the cephalic phase is that's when you see your food, you smell your food, and then you're ready to taste your food. So what's your favorite thing to eat? Taste. Okay. You didn't figure it out? No, I'm telling you, I'm like weird. Okay. Yeah, everything worked great. Right. Okay. If now that y'all use some kind of timer thingy for this one, right? Yeah. I remember them using it last year. I don't remember specifics, but I know Chris knows. Yeah. I'll update you as soon as I remember exactly what I was Okay. Sounds good. Okay. So as soon as you get pulled up to Big John, you can smell it, right? And your, your mouth starts to water. So smell it. It's, you can, um, it. Your mouth starts to water, and you start to think about it. Like, 
Well, I think I do the same. I think the same thing whenever I need to take about um, vinegar. Well, she said her name, and she was like, "That's not like a thing." And like garlic, like I can eat some type of thing, but like Alfredo, like some type of spaghetti, and so like I'll eat it, but it's not everything ever. But when I hear it. So the vagal nerve is stimulated when we see or smell food that we like. Um, and then that that stimulation of the vagal ner nerve, it makes us secrete acid into the stomach because we think we're going to eat. Um, and it also stimulates the parietal cells so that gastrin and um, all those gastric secretions start. Now the gastric phase is actually when we break things down. So we break we break down um <laughs> so um, in the gastric phase basically that's that initial breakdown of food where it makes larger part larger chains of uh, nutrients become smaller chains of nutrients. That's what I would remember about the gastric phase. Also, due to the gastric secretion, the pH of our stomach falls to 2.5. That will burn through your skin. That will burn through that food. When, when the stomach is, pro is breaking down food, the, the acidity is 2.5. That's year, battery acid. What, yeah, last year, um, and what's this one? Teddy's Post, and I had a bone cup, and I put it in some acid, and it was like this weird. Yeah, it was like oh, Yeah, it will literally, the secretion to your stomach during the gastric phase will literally be Okay, the intestinal phase, this is where most of your digestion, the actual absorption of your nutrients take place. Um, the stomach becomes more neutral during this during this time because all of the uh, all the food is all of the food in the, in the um, consistency of time is released into the duodenum and the duodenum secretes a hormone, a hormone that helps stop that gastric acid production. Um, those of us who have reflux, this during this stage is very difficult because our sphincters don't close all the way. I don't have reflux anymore. I had surgery. I don't have reflux. And that's the way where like burns. Yeah, you will burn all the way up in your throat. You feel like you're gonna throw a bunch of acid down. I don't have that anymore. So what exactly is that? That makes me so mad. So some of it is food particles that aren't released all the way. Some of it it's, it's when your sphincters don't close off. So it will it will send when the stomach spasms it will actually just send that back. Babies have it a lot. I'll probably get like a drink. Yeah, don't mess it up. The enterogastric reflex begins when the small intestine, uh, when the small intestine or where that that pyloric uh, sphincter is, and it helps the duodenum fill with that. Um, thick time, and then the nervous system kind of takes over again to help with that digestion. Now remember that um, what happens, what kind of movement is happening? You guys remember from yesterday what kind of movement is happening uh, in the small intestine? So if peristalsis is happening in the esophagus, what kind of movement is happening in the small intestine? Segmentation. That's segmentation. Segmentation is what happens in the small intestine, where food is moved back and forth, it's mixed with other hormones, um, so that it can to the, get to the point where it can be released. I will. Um, this would be a this particular slide when I post it. I might would know a little about this particular slide. The hormones and the neural and hormonal mechanisms of digestion. So our pancreas is an accessory organ. Um, the pancreas is one of the most important uh, accessory organs. It produces um, it, it produces enzymes that help us break things down. Without the pancreas, our digestion would be um, significantly less. 
More than 98% of the pancreas mass is devoted to uh, to exit brain function. What is exit brain function? Exome means get rid of, right? Endo means it's internal exome. So, so exit brain glands are going to secrete something that's going somewhere else. Um, and those pancreatic juices uh, at uh, have, they have something called ductile cells. They produce sodium bicarbonate. Very important for neutralizing gastric acid. What else does the, pa the pancreas do? Do you guys think the pancreas or that you guys should know that the pancreas do? Insulin and glucagon. So to help maintain, regulate blood sugar. But most people think that basically the pancreas, all it does is produce insulin and glucagon. It's a very small part of it. Sometimes they can do something called a wiggle, which is a partial removal of the pancreas, uh, and it can treat it if they can get it in the right end. Like if they have cancer right in there, so they're going to do a portion of it and keep it from there. But if it's in the center to the back half of it where the larger section is, they can't remove that because it doesn't have enough bicarbonate, but it won't make enough sodium bicarbonate for the body. Um, I don't want to scratch on the word because I'm for sure, I'm like 90% positive. I'm going to have cancer before I die. Because my grandpa ran it on my dad's side, and so did my grandma. She has it now. And then, like, everybody on the freaking mom's side, all her aunts, grands, and uncles, and everything, everybody from her mom's side, they had like, they had 12 brothers and sisters, and then eight of them are going to be You need to be 23. That's okay. So, like, you know, they have the. Um, Yeah, it can show you uh, the 23 and me is the one that's more medically based. The shorter one, like it's about the descendants. So the 23 and me actually will tell you your, your some genetic predisposition story. So it may tell you that you have a genetic predisposition to have cancer. Doesn't mean you're going to have cancer. It just means you have a likelihood too. So then, that, then you can go. But then you go and you figure out. If, then you change your diet. You exercise. You take care of yourself better. And maybe. Um, that cancer gene is never actually activated because your immune system is able to fight it off. Um, and so the pancreas and gallbladder work together very specifically so that they can break down not just sugars but uh, also liquids. Major pancreatic enzymes, amylase. Um, people who have pancreatitis, so diabetics tend to get pancreatitis, or people who drink a lot or do drugs end up with pancreatitis a lot. That's an inflammation of the pancreas, and their amylase and lipase go very high, which makes their blood sugar all over the place. Very painful. Amylase is responsible for taking long chains of sugars and breaking them down into simple um, two chains, double chains of sugars. Uh, it makes lipase as well. Lipase is what breaks down fatty glycerides and makes them a fatty acid. So, anybody know anybody with high cholesterol or high triglycerides? Is that the parents that take cholesterol pills? So, I remember those cholesterol things that we looked at. Wasn't it last year that we pulled out? They were like circles and what they were. So, lipase, they, they, they have to take an additional supplement to make sure their lipase breaks down those triglycerides. Plus, the chamber died. $199. On Black Friday, it's like $1,600. That's a lot. Because there's an ancestor service in the middle of the hill. You want to do the hill. I know. Special offer? Sometimes they're interesting. Um, nuclease is what helps break down nucleic acids into nucleotides so that cells can reproduce. And then you've got proteinase. And that is uh, an inactive form of um, a pep to help break peptides down into amino acids. There are also some other ones that it makes. Um, trypsin is uh, important for digestion in the in the duodenum. Uh, like I said, it makes ton, it makes ton of digestive enzymes, but it's only two percent of the pancreas that does that work. Everything else the pancreas does is related to making sure that your acid-base balance stays. There you go. There was activation of proteinase in the small intestines. How that works. You have to have um, 
protease and you have to have um, trypsin and hydrochloric acid so that you can break down proteins into essential amino acids. How many essential amino acids and non essential amino acids are there? Do you remember that number? Yep. Nine essential amino acids. Nine you have 20 total amino acids, so there are 9 essential and 11 non essential. What is essential mean? <laughs> this means you can't make it yourself. That's why it's essential to your diet. Because there are certain amino acids that we have to take. In. It's supposed to be the duodenum. That's the part of the small intestines right outside the, right outside the stomach. So those enzymes are dumped. Specifically into the duodenum, not into the stomach. And we're stopping. Hang on to the video. Hang on.